fisheries is a renewable resource that is spread almost all over India, from deep sea areas to mountainous lakes, large rivers, wetlands to rural ponds. The sector is a fast-growing segment of food production and contributes more than 5.84% to the agricultural GDP and 1.07% to the national GDP. The annual export earnings from fish and shellfish are 8,068 crore rupees and are nearly 20% of all agricultural export. In order to ensure the continued growth and development of this sector, the government over the years increased the plan outlay from a modest 5.13 crore rupees in the first plan to 2,776 crore rupees in the 11th plan. India today is the third largest producer of fish in the world with a total annual production of 7.64 million tons. Although the sector has achieved an annual growth rate of 4% over the years, yet the annual per capita availability of fish in the country is only 9 kilograms against the global per capita consumption of 12 kilograms. There is therefore enormous scope to enhance growth in this sector to 12.5 million tons by the year 2025. This would be possible with the development of new technologies and the upgradation of existing ones through research carried out by different fishery institutes. As far as freshwater fish resources are concerned, India has vast resources scattered over 29,000 kilometers of rivers, 0.19 million hectares of backwaters and lagoons, 3.15 million hectares of reservoirs, 0.2 million hectares of floodplain wetlands, and 0.72 million hectares of upland lakes. These water bodies are home to a rich biodiversity comprising 640 species of fish. However, in recent years, these water bodies have been degraded at an alarming rate due to development activities, mainly water abstraction, effluent inputs, and reclamation. Consequently, contribution from these water bodies to total inland production is only 33%. 1.55 million tons out of the 4.64 million tons. At the Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute or SIFRI in Barakpur in West Bengal, Methodologies are formulated for the conservation of natural fisheries as well as the augmentation of production from these resources. The institute has generated and is generating data on ecology, biodiversity, fishery status of major rivers, lakes, reservoirs, estuaries and estuarine lakes for conservation of fishery in these resources for formulation of action plans to halt pollution levels as in the case of the Ganga Action Plan, to understand the biology of fish species for development of seed in the near future and to make them suitable for culture. SIFRI has also developed pen and cage culture technologies to augment fish production in reservoirs from the current 20 kilograms per hectare to 50 kilograms per hectare. The technology is most useful for the weed-choked water bodies of the northeastern regions where the yield can be raised from 160 kilograms to 1000 kilograms. Fish farming practices traditionally confined to Indian major carps have diversified and the scope of aquaculture for commercial ventures has been enlarged. In Bhubaneswar, in the eastern state of Orissa, the Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture has done considerable research on the growth and diversification of this sector. Within a brief period of a little over 20 years, it has developed many innovative technologies. 
portable low cost FRP hatcheries in contrast to the earlier fixed concrete hatcheries these are portable and can be taken to different villages culture of fresh water prawns carp seed rearing for production of fry and fingerlings prolonged and multiple breeding of three major cultivable species of Indian carp rohu katla and mrigal Development of multiple cropping for grow out production of carps. Diversification in fish farming covering other 10 to 15 species, some minor carps. Chinese carps, catfish and air breathing fishes like singhi. Utilization of saline, swarms, delirict water bodies. Other initiatives are the integrated farming system, development of sewage fed polyculture, treatment of wastewater into a productive resource and the development of feeds for various growth stages of carp, therapeutic and prophylactic agent. Training is imparted to local villagers to help them in greater fish production both for food and profit. Fish farming was mainly practiced in freshwater ponds but in the states of Kerala and West Bengal, brackish water resources were also utilized for shrimp farming. Today, shrimp farming is a major commercial activity all along the coastal states, utilizing 19 lakhs 11,074 hectares of brackish water. Rapid utilization of this resource has already led to a 10% growth of shrimp farming since 1984 contributing 76% of shrimp export by value and 49% by volume. Scientific and technological interventions developed by the Central Institute of Brackish Water Aquaculture or SIBA in Chennai were instrumental in enhancing the shrimp yield to 1.5 to 2.4 tons per hectare as against the earlier output of only 250 to 500 kilograms per hectare. Their initiatives include designing of shrimp hatcheries, diversification of shrimp varieties from single species to other varieties like green tiger prawn, white shrimp, banana shrimp and others. Inclusion of other valuable commodities like grey mullet, pearl spot and sea bass through seed production and brood stock development. Development of feed technology for live food item, Artemia. Development of diagnostic kits to detect virus and disease and better health management of shrimp culture. India is endowed with a long coastline of 8,129 kilometers, a continental shelf of 0.5 million square kilometers and an EEZ of 2.02 million square kilometers. Together, they currently produce 3 million tons with a potential yield of 3.9 million tons. The Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, located in Kochi, Kerala, is working to maximize the potential from mariculture with a number of innovative technologies. These are Farming of edible mussel. The production achieved has been 7,500 tons per year with an estimated profit of 11,000 to 19,000 rupees from a unit area of 200 meters. The technology has taken a status of a small scale industry, especially along the coastal villages in the west. Farming of edible oysters. A valuable seafood, its commercial production started in 1990 and presently India produces 900 tons of oysters annually. Seaweed culture technology has helped to create a small-scale industry. Technology for breeding and developing expensive ornamental fish such as clownfish, damselfish and seahorse will pave the way for better earnings from both the domestic and the export market. The technology for open seawater culture is being worked out for marine fin fishes, especially sea bass, which will mark a new beginning in marine farming. Cold 
underwater fisheries is another important field that is receiving close attention. At the Directorate of the Cold Water Fisheries Research in Bhimtal, in Uttarakhand, in North India, technology has been developed for the breeding and hatchery management of cold water fishes such as the golden and chocolate masir, snow trout and exotic carp species. Research and development at the Central Institute of Fisheries Technology or SIFT also in Kochi has focused on this aspect by working on the design of crafts for fuel efficiency, improved economical and environmentally sustainable nets for responsible fishery both in sea and inland waters, improved traps for lobsters and crab fishery. The Institute has also developed technology to ensure food safety and processing of value-added products like fish wafers, pickles and fish curry. Fish maws, ising glass for clarification of wine, production of collagen, chitosan film for use in wound dressing and the use of fish air bladder in dental surgery. The National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resources in Lucknow is providing the research needed to develop a sound database of fishery resources and to preserve aquatic germplasm for the nation. The Institute also evaluates exotic aquatic species and pathogens and provides guidelines to policy planners. To meet this need for trained and qualified professionals, the government has set up the Central Institute of Fisheries Education in Mumbai. The institute offers postgraduate programs and PhD degrees, extension education facilities to personnel from different states of India, as well as Afro-Asian countries. Fish is perhaps one of the oldest sources of high-value food in the Indian diet, rich in protein and amino acids and easily digested. In many parts of the country, it is considered a delicacy and about 56% of the Indian population eats and enjoys fish. Fish has played an important part in India's myth and mythology. Fishing goes back to ancient times and has been integral to man's growth and evolution. Today, as we enter the new millennium, perhaps it is time for India to re-emphasize its importance and to make the fishing industry a major part of our global economic growth.